So, um, I am, my name is Dawn Wilson Rapolo, and I'm a baking paper for over 30 years. And I learned it at a workshop. And um, handmade paper is made from recycled cotton clothing. So, what I do at home is I take uh, my old denim jeans or um, an old cotton blouse and I cut it up, take off all the buttons, take off all the seams, and I cut it into little one inch pieces. And then I have a machine called a beater, which is a Hollander beater. Um, and that is where the term beat to a pulp came from. So it never really meant to beat somebody up, it meant to beat, <laughs> beat up threads. And when paper making started, there were people who were rag collectors. So they went around to people's homes to knock on doors and asked for their rags. And they took the rags and cleaned them, and then they made paper out of them. So um, that's kind of the process real quickly. It is very clean, um, so it's messy. It's clean because there are no chemicals. There's no, um, there's no tree pulp. In order to make paper out of trees, you have to break it down with lots and lots of chemicals. There's fumes. This way, there's no fumes, no chemicals, there's no dye, there's nothing that can hurt anybody. So it's really, really safe. Uh, and um, so what we've done today is most of these, are, or three of these um, pants, there's just white cotton linter made into pulp. And it's a little bit different than like what I've used before. So um, hoping that it works, but maybe a little thick. And, well, this, it's, it's kind of a thing you have to do trial and error. If it's too thick, you add more water. If it's too thin, then you get very thin sheets of paper. You add more pulp. Uh, what I've done in this one here is I took both road maps and I chopped it up with some of the white pulp. I love to use things in my paper that have meaning. And uh, to me, road maps are really cool. If you look at it, you can see little bits of the roadmap, the, you know, the different colors. It's, it's chalk to be fine with this you can see some of the dimensions of things. And since we all have our own journeys that we're on, uh, I think roadmaps are really significant for everybody because we all have our own journey. So if you make a piece of paper that incorporates roadmaps, and then when it's dry, you can use it to journal and make Hard for somebody, or uh, even just bring it. Uh, you could do calligraphy on it. There's lots of different things you can do with it. But having that paper with the roadmaps in it kind of helps it already have some meaning to it. This pulp back here is made from, um, this is made from old pattern sheets. Anybody ever used to sew? Yeah, this, this is a, a kind of paper that's, that comes from a banana plant. It's called Abaca. And that is what Karen teaches us about. And I only have a little bit, and I want to just use it for, you know, um, to wash the paper or you know, just add some interest or something. But again, pattern tissue is kind of confusing when you have all these markings on it. We can all relate to clothing. Wear clothing um, to show. So this is just a little extra one you can use if you like. Um, and paper making is very experimental. So there's no right and wrong. There's no good and bad. Um, and if you make a piece and it's really messed up, you can just put it back in, stir it up, and start all over. So it's just it's very forgiving. So I will um, go over and show you. Um, on these, these, this is called a bowl. This is called a duck. And I've written on these this side down. So you don't want to see these words. It's very tempting to fill them with water, with open water. Because it looks like, oh, I need this to be clean. But you don't need them to clean it. Because once it gets in here, it's impossible to get back to it. So you don't want to see the words. Um, so you have this flat part with this green on it, this is a deckle, put that on top. 
off. This is probably the hardest one to do. Then fold it together. And you can put some on top of this and the fingers on there. And while you put your fingers in here, you're going to have fingers on the two And then the other thing you can do Deckle is a, is a big two different things. This is a deckle, but when you make it and it's deeper, it's usually has kind of a baby edge to it. That's also called a deckle. So, one way to identify and make it deeper is if you see that baby edge. So, when you're um, about to make a sheet of paper, you want to use your hand like a um, a little helicopter uh, blade, sort of, and stir it up because the pulp tends to sink to the bottom and the water comes to the top. So you stir it up and then you're going to hold it like this, go straight down, and then you bring it level with the water under the pulp, and then bring it straight up. As you're bringing it up, you're going to try to shake it. You've got a little bit this way and a little bit this way. And the reason that you do that is the paper is made of fibers. So just like if you would look at the fiber of the clothing, you can see the little grub going in two different directions. Those are the fibers that are in the paper. And if you um, don't do that, it won't be as strong. Newsprint is made on a conveyor belt. So if you've ever um, tried to tear something out of a newspaper, you'll notice that one way it tears super easy, straight. Other way is like jagged. It's like, why this doesn't make sense? Why can't I just tear this out of a newspaper? Well, it's because it's being shaken in one direction the whole way it's going on the, on the conveyor belt. So all those fibers are lining up as it's going down the conveyor belt. So that way you can tear the paper one way almost perfectly straight, but the other way it's jagged. So in order to make the paper nice and strong, give it a little shake, a little shake. And don't worry if you, you know, lose it. Does it work out again? You can fix it, it'll be fine. And I think that this helps is going to be have to be very quick on your shapes because it's just the way it came out. So I'm going to do one and see what happens. Yeah, it sunk very quickly, so there wasn't much time to shape. And then um, kind of press it against the edge. Take some of this stuff off. So again, then you want to take your deckle off and just put it in the water. I have this is a paper. At this point, it's called a water because it's mostly water. You can kind of shake it around, let some water drip off. It's not going to really go anywhere. There's kind of a section between the paper and the screen. And then we're going to do what's called pooching. And take the pooch paper and do press this down. words on it instead of the And then once you do that, you'll put another pooch paper on top. And then when you get, you can do several, and then we'll put them in the press and press them out. And then um, while you, so that's just kind of how to do a basic sheet. Then you can do, um, you can start doing fun things like um, have, have a basic sheet and like, like one 
Then you can take another really thin sheet of paper. If you want now, if you want to use the color, you can use the color. So I don't want to just fall up. Not much fun of it. won't be as much to take off on that one, or maybe not any, because there isn't a double on it. And then you can do a stack. So Now, once you cut the water out of them, you'll be able to handle it. Like they'll be really wet, but you can pick them up carefully. And then you can take them home. Um, usually I bring some cardboard to put them on. We'll figure out something. Um, you take them home. And the best thing is, like, if you have a glass tabletop or even a, uh, a countertop, if you set them on there, they will stick to the countertop. And that way they'll dry really flat. And they're dry, they'll just peel right off. Well, we have done it before where we just put them on windows and let them dry. If you just let them dry in the air, they're going to curl up. The paper dries from the edge of the skin, so the edges start to dry first and then they ripple. If people like that, I'm kind of thinking I want my paper to dry. Mm -hmm. And then if it does get ripply, you can just use a spray bottle with water, filter your paper, and then um, you can sandwich it between, you don't want to sandwich between just books because you don't want to do any books, but something like a uh, piece of plastic you can get on the whiteboard or, you know, sticking on the house. 
slide from the cutting board. Um, and then you can tie open both on top so that it dries from the way down. To get it to dry flat. I've tried ironing before too, but that doesn't work so well. So. Okay, let's try this. It's, it's the cold. Pretty thick. Okay, I am living right now. <laughs> <laughs> Cross. It's kind of thick. Oh, yeah. There you go. There. Perfect. There you go. Did you say not this one? Actually, oh, I like how it feels. Okay. <laughs> it's just not me. Oh, Don, why is it so? Why am I doing something? Oh, it's going toward me. Going. I think it's supposed to go toward me, right? And then also try the go to Z. It's the pulp. The pulp is just chunky. It's a different kind of pulp than I'm used to using. I thought it was going to look pretty thick. It's going to be okay though. So, 